tomorrow. Joining us now is the Washington Times reporter, Kelly Riddell. Kelly, it is good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. How important are Arizona and Utah, uh, and, and who has the most to gain here? Let's talk about tomorrow's big contests. Well, I think you have Ted Cruz uh, with the most to gain and the most to lose here. Um, he really needs to pull off a victory in Utah, and he needs to get above the 50% threshold there so he gets all of the delegates. What you could see is John Kasich being a spoiler. Um, Ted Cruz is really betting his money on Utah. He also, you saw him change his schedule yesterday and, and take a surprise trip to Arizona. What that might mean is that internal polling there puts him a little closer within striking distance to Donald Trump, who's expected to take that state. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. And Doug High, mm -hmm. these contests become increasingly important every single contest for, uh, for a Ted Cruz. No doubt about yeah, that. And at one this of the, point. One of the things that's interesting with the Cruz campaign, if you talk to them, they're confident that they'll win Arizona on Election Day with Election Day voting. But that mm -hmm. speaks to the real advantage that Donald Trump has. His early voting has been massive for him. If, Trump, if, if Cruz is able to not just win on Election Day, but eke out even a one-vote victory in Arizona, it builds his case moving forward so much more. And, and even though mm -hmm. Dagan McDowell, you know, Donald Trump has been obviously victorious with m most Republicans, the Cruz campaign tells me they feel that they have a clear path if he does well with the remaining contests. And, I, and so Cruz's path is to take it to a contested convention, right? Because right? he's got to win more than 80 percent of the re remaining delegate, 83 percent of the remaining delegates to get to 1237, which is highly unlikely compared to 57 percent for Trump. And over the weekend, you heard Reince Priebus, the head of the Republican uh, Party, essentially saying, that they're preparing right. for contested convention. Let me bring some of that to you because right. Reince Priebus joined me yesterday on, on Sunday Morning Futures and he basically said exactly that, that he's prepared to run a historically transparent convention. Watch this. We've got candidates that have a pathway to getting to the majority of delegates before Cleveland, but if that doesn't happen, obviously we'll be prepared to run the most open and transparent open convention in the history of our party. There you go. I mean, they are taking steps to actually expect this. And that's a shift from his tone yeah. just uh, earlier this month when he was talking about it being highly, highly unlikely, I think, was one of the phrases that he used. And, and I just don't know how that goes over with voters. I, there's such a divide with the Republican Party. That doesn't mend the fissures in the party yeah. if it goes to a convention. Kelly, what do you think about that? Well, I think that uh, Donald Trump still has a possibility of winning this thing outright and that we shouldn't, we shouldn't count him out and that the contest tomorrow will see what his path is forward. But if there is a contested convention, listen, he can go. Donald Trump is preparing for that as well. He's going to all of these um, delegates that are uncommitted. There's about 322 of them. He can win this on the first ballot. If it goes to the second ballot and the RNC and party insiders start shenanigans in terms of naming a third party or somebody who hasn't even run in these primaries on the ticket, I think the Republican Party has some real problems going forward then. Have you ever seen this kind of backlash to a, to a candidate? I know you're on that side. So <laughs> no, no, you're, never. you're among those pushing back. I mean, th there are many reasons why Donald Trump is a unique candidate. The backlash he faces in, within his own party speaks to that. And we were talking about Utah earlier. Polling has showed um, from yesterday that Donald Trump as a nominee could lose Utah, the most Republican state in the union. It's another reason why so many Republican Party leaders and certainly our Senate candidates and House candidates are nervous about what his candidacy would mean. Well, certainly you're you're seeing the establishment labeled Donald Trump as a rhino, right, Republican in name only. They're going after his past policies, which are very liberal. But one of the things that we haven't talked about is where's Kasich going to get another win? Is he can he take another state? He's hoping on an on an open convention, correct? I mean, there's no path for him. He's mathematically eliminated. So right. isn't he relying you need on that? You, you talked about 83 percent for Cruz, 112 percent of remaining delegates, yeah, which I is obviously that impossible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and he's also banking on a rule change, right? Like, I mean, you have to win at least eight states in order to be on the first ballot. So he's hoping that before that even goes to a convention, there's, there's a rule change that qualifies him. I mean, it's a long, long, long shot. You, you think he's out. basically just saying, look, I'm in this to be vice president? You know, it, it, right now, it, he says no, and, yeah. well, and so we've got to take him at his word. Yeah, we've got to take him at his word right now, but who knows? I think he'd be smarter if he got out, if let's he wanted talk, that Let's shot. talk about this violence for a second. Uh, did Donald Trump's sister now getting targeted over the weekend, receiving a mm. threatening letter one day after Trump's son, Eric Trump, received a suspicious letter with white powder inside. Remember that happened last week. All of this coming as more violence broke out in Arizona during one of Trump's events over the weekend. Uh, things are just continuing to escalate, Kelly. H how does this change the situation? 
I don't think it changes it much for his core supporters. And the more you know, Trump rises, the more he becomes a threat. The more the, the more threats I'm, I'm afraid that he's going to receive. Um, uh, he's he's testing the party's bounds. He's testing he's testing the American populace. He's a very polarizing figure. Yeah. Um, it's, it's it's a terrible situation. But for his core supporters, I think that you're going to see them rally around him some more um, and and not not flake off. Uh, in terms of the the eruptions of these protests at the at the his uh, events not his fault I'm sorry I don't care how many times yeah. people point fingers at him but one thing he can do it, and it speaks to what Ivanka what he was saying his daughter Ivanka was saying yeah. he can change how he change acts on Twitter mm -hmm. he know he can change how he particularly acts yeah. on Twitter like you, you know step back top stop Good taking point. shots yeah. at people who frankly mm -hmm. don't matter that much to his presidential campaign well, not, but he can't help not, not only on Twitter but also yeah. at the events he can say please remove this person or be like you know we can hear your voice or objections Instead later of Go home to mommy. Throw them out. You Instead know, punch them. You know, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he can yeah. actually you know, do that. At the events, though, they do start, and I've been at several of these events, they do start saying if you do see a protest or if someone starts yelling, just point, we'll peaceably remove them, do not, mm -hmm. do not hit, do not. So there is that. He is making those inroads in those, those areas. Sure. I, Kelly, I'd ask, you know, how, how are those being perceived at those events? Is it a bit like getting on the airplane and, and not listening to the safety <laughs> announcements or before a baseball game, not paying attention to the code of conduct? Are people listening no, to those? Because we haven't seen that. Actually People are actually listening to those, and this just started happening last week after the Chicago um, after the Chicago pro protests, where they say, you know, you know, calm, everyone should calm down, just point them out, point and say Trump, Trump, USA, USA, and we will get you know the security officials to remove them. Yeah. But please don't lay a hand on them, and that and that is going on. But these, you know, a lot of these protesters want to be forcibly removed. They want to be sneak, they want to sneak in, you know, take their shirts off, start protesting, and then they have to be removed from these events. So hmm. this is not Donald Trump's fault as much as it is, you know, these protesters, everyone's got a First Amendment right, and we've got to respect both sides. Kelly, 